Close the doors, walk across the corridor. We got something to show you. Media is our record. Okay, no need for me to do some long introduction because we need to get to the meat of the conversation today. Tom, are you here? Here I am. There you are. Yay. <laughs> I was looking I'm for here. you. I'm and here. You're here. You're here. And I'm so happy you're here. So what I want you to do is actually introduce yourself to the audience. Tell them who you are and a little bit of what you do before we get into the meat of our conversation. Sure, sure. So I'll give you uh, I'll, I'll give everybody my quick little uh, little bio um, to just kind of help you understand who I am. I think we're all kind of a product of our uh, our experiences. Right. So helps yeah. you understand kind of who I am and what I do. Right. Um, so my name's Tom Lang and I own a, a production company in based in the Hudson Valley of New York called Talix Media. Uh, I've been in production for 20 years, started out in 2001, right out of college. My first job out of college was in production, um, sort of by accident. That's a that's another story, but uh, ended up kind of falling into production, started out working as a production assistant. So entry level, I was the gopher. Uh, I was the guy taking coffee orders, getting people lunch, that kind of deal. So started out working as a production assistant, ended up really enjoying working in production, had a lot of fun. And so I worked my way up and I ended up 17 years later as a showrunner and series producer overseeing uh, episodic series content for networks. Um, so multi-million dollar budgeted productions. And uh, over the course of that 17 year career in the entertainment industry, I garnered a couple of Emmy nominations for my work. Uh, I like to say uh, I didn't win the trophy, otherwise it would be sitting here behind me. Um, but uh, I do like to say that I know it wasn't a fluke because I was nominated more than once. So uh so yeah, so that's my that's my career in in entertainment. And then three years ago, um, I made a switch for a variety of reasons, both uh, to move out of the entertainment industry uh, as well as to kind of follow uh, an entrepreneurial path and uh, blaze my own trail. I started my business um, to work in the B two B space to help businesses mm. improve the way they communicate with their audiences and the communities that they serve. And so, um, so that's what I do now. So I've spent the last three years, uh, building up, um, this business and, uh, and in, in that process, uh, have created uh, a unique approach to content production, uh, that I call legendeering. Mm, okay. And we're going to talk about legendeering in a moment. I want to know from you though, all of your experience that you had in the entertainment industry as a showrunner, et cetera, how did that prepare you to start Talix Media? Um, so, you know, it didn't, it didn't. Uh, okay. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, in, in some ways it did in the sense that, uh, the entertainment industry is traditionally, uh, by and large, um, an independent contractor uh, industry. So the vast majority of the work that I did in uh, television was project based. And so we would come on work for, you know, anywhere from a few months to a year on a particular project, sometimes a few years uh, as you moved up, like the contracts kind of get longer and longer because uh, you're involved in, in more of the process starting in the very early stages of pre-production and following all the way through to uh, final delivery to the network. Um, so the contracts get longer as you move up, but, uh, but yeah, so we, um, so it helped me, it helped prepare me to, to be an entrepreneur in the sense that I was accustomed to uh, having a little bit of uncertainty, right? I wasn't coming from a background of having a very, very secure, steady, stable employment uh, history or career trajectory. I was used to changing jobs a lot, uh, going from company to company on working on different projects. And so, so that was helpful because, uh, you know, making the leap to being an entrepreneur is scary and definitely risky. Um, and I think having a lot of exposure to that risk, um, and that sort of periodized, uh, employment helped me a lot. Um, the, the place where it didn't help me, uh, was it didn't teach me how to be an entrepreneur, right? So it helped mm. me deal with some of the aspects of entrepreneurship, but it did not teach me how to be an entrepreneur and teach me how to run a business. Um, and so I spent the first few years that I was in business on my own thinking that I had to figure out everything on my own. Um, okay. I believed 100% uh, 
completely falsely, it turned out, but I believed that successful entrepreneurs were the entrepreneurs, the people that could could do everything on their own, that could figure out how to do everything on their own. Um, and then I realized that actually I had it backwards. Mm. The successful entrepreneurs were the ones that asked for help. And the entrepreneurs that fail or that fail to grow beyond be, being a solopreneur, right? Be, the ones that fail to grow uh, beyond being a one-man shop or completely fail their businesses fail are the ones that don't ask for help and try to do everything on their own. Um, and so uh, I invested last year in uh, some personal development um, to help me learn how to be a better business owner and a better entrepreneur because uh, it was... It was uh, an area that I was severely lacking knowledge in, and I needed some guidance. And uh, unbeknownst to me, uh, that's something that you can buy. So I did. And that is awesome because I think, first of all, you're a creative, right? See, by by nature, you're a creative. And creatives, because I'm also a creative, often the business side goes by the wayside because we're so concerned with trying to create that we forget about the business side. And then couple that with the fact that if you happen to go uh, into a major in college that is on the creative side, like um, video production or film or, or whatever, you're not really getting anything about the business side of it. So, and that's with any major <laughs> talking for, as a professor, it, that's with any major. So let's talk about Talex Media. I, I'm so interested and Talex Media and legendeering. I love the word legendeering. Thanks. Tell us a little Thanks. bit about both. Sure. Sure. So, um, Talix Media, uh, I'll tell you the quick little story of how, how we came up with the name. Um, so actually, the, the LLC has existed since 2007. That's what the, if you look on my on my hat, on the logo, the MMVII, um, that's for 2007. That's when the LLC was actually um, created or formed. And uh, that goes back to 2006. I was uh, talking with a buddy of mine. We had an idea for a business. Um, and, uh, so, uh, as you do when you're in, uh, in your twenties and don't really know what you're doing, you, the first thing we did was come up with a name for the business. And, uh, so we came up with Talix and, uh, and really liked it, but then actually never followed through or did anything with the business. And about a year later, I was doing some contract work, um, for MTV at the time. And I needed to form an LLC, um, as, a, a uh, because I was being paid as a, as a 1099 employee uh, and I needed to form an LLC to work as a pass through um, for uh, tax purposes. And so um, I called up my buddy and I said, hey, do you mind if I use uh, the name that we came up with? If I use Talix Media um, as the name for my LLC that I have to form, I really like it. And he said, yeah, man, I don't care. I'm not going to do anything with it. Um, and uh, the long and the short of it is my name is Tom, which you all know. And my buddy um, is, uh, his name is Alex. And, uh, so Talix is how is, is, uh, just the contraction of our names. That's how we came up with the name. And, uh, and yeah, it's cool because, uh, Alex and I've known each other since we were two years old. He's my oldest friend. And, uh, so every, every time I say the name or see the logo, it's, uh, you know, a little reminder of our, our friendship. So. Very cool. Very cool. And from Talex me media then spurred or sparked legendeering exactly what right. is legendeering talk to us about it so so what it does what it is is it's based around episodic branded content production that is specifically designed to deliver value to a business's ideal audience or the community that they serve and and the goal behind it is to trigger reciprocity with that audience um, and because it's branded content uh, the value triggers reciprocity and then the branded, uh, the branding side, uh, creates avenues or opportunities for the audience to return that value, um, back to the organization. So an easy way to describe sort of the, what it does, what it accomplishes, what it can do, the power of it for an organization, um, is to just talk about a, a simple analogy, uh, that, that I found most people that I talk to can relate with. And that is, um, going out to dinner with a friend, right? Being at dinner with a friend and getting towards the end of the meal and the check comes and your friend gets their wallet or their credit card out first. And they say, I got this dinner's on me. Right. And then 
you do the little dance back and forth. You get your card or your wallet out and you say, oh, no, no, you don't have to do that. And they say, no, 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 come on, I insist. It's my pleasure. And you say, oh, well, at least let me cover my 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 part. And they say, no, no, no. Well, at least let me cover the check, the tip. And they say, no, no, no. And eventually you make two decisions side by side. You decide to capitulate. You decide to give in. You decide to let them buy you dinner and you decide to reciprocate, right? And uh, you actually say both of those decisions, although you may not be aware that you're making two uh, individual decisions at the time, you say both of them out loud, often in the same breath. When you say, okay, but the next one is on me. And so that's what legendeering allows you to do for the community that you serve or the community that you seek to serve is it allows you to essentially buy them dinner and then through the branding create opportunity for them to buy you dinner in return. Mm. So is there an aspect of that that could be applied to the individual? For example, an individual creating content wanting to create, uh, connect with their audiences as opposed to a business. Is there like, just take a regular content creator. Absolutely. Would they employ Absolutely. this as well? Okay. okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. So my, my argument would be then in that case, you're the brand, right? If you are talking about applying this to an individual content creator, um, the strategy remains identical. It's just that instead of being a, a business that sells widgets, right? You're the brand, right? And so the question you have to ask yourself, the place to start is always, who do you want to reach, right? Who's your audience that you're trying to connect with, that you're trying to communicate with, that you're trying to establish a relationship with, right? Who's the community that you're seeking to serve, right? And then behind that question, once you answer that question, then you have to think about, you have to figure out, you have to answer this question, which is how can you leverage your expertise or your network or what you have readily accessible to you to provide value to that audience. So what can you give that they will value, that that audience will value, right? And once you figure those two pieces out, then the next step is to create a format that's part of the process. And it's, it's actually a pretty important part of the process is that not only is the content episodic, right? As in you do it over and over and over again, right? Just like your favorite TV shows, it is also formatted. So I'll give you two examples. I'm old enough, uh, and I don't know, I don't want to speak for our audience, but I'm old enough that I remember as a kid, we used to get the TV guide in the mail, right? And, and if you didn't get the TV guide in the mail, then you probably got, uh, you probably checked your TV listings in a newspaper if you're as old as I am, right? And so what I want you to think about is, checking those listings in either the TV guide or the newspaper, looking for the listing for your favorite show, right? And then looking next to that, there would often be a little R, right? Next to the listing for that show. And that little R represented um, that that show was a rerun or a repeat episode, right? And I want you to think about how you felt when you opened up that newspaper, you opened up that TV guide and you looked for the listing for your favorite show and you found that there was no R, and you knew that there was a new episode of your favorite show coming out, right? Think about that feeling. You were, you were excited, right? You were happy, right? You anticipated that, that new episode coming out and you were happy. That excitement, that anticipation, and that happiness, right? Think about that. So what formatted episodic content allows you to do is exactly that. It allows you to create that feeling, that same feeling for your audience with your content, right? Because you're leading with value. You valued your favorite program as a child because it provided value to you, right? Typically entertainment value, um, but that's value nonetheless, right? So it provided value to you through entertainment. So that's what, so you valued it, right? Um, because it, it delivered that gift to you. And so, uh, and because it was formatted, right? And episodic, you, you were you knew what to expect when you watched that show. You had certain a certain set of expectations based on the existing format of that show. And then because it's episodic, you knew that those expectations were going to be met over and over and over again. Right. So what formatting allows you to do is it allows you to set expectations for your audience and then deliver. And then through episodic content production, uh, through repeating it over and over again, 
what you get to do is then meet those expectations over and over, right? Time after time. And what that does is build trust with your audience, right? Um, and and so ultimately, that's sort of like the 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 secret sauce to it is by formatting, right? And within that format, obviously, you can change the content within the format. It's just that the overall structure, the framework of each episode is the same, right? Um, but by creating that format and then repeating productions of episodes of your series of content as a solo content creator, right? Um, repeating them and having them follow that format means that every time somebody sees one of your pieces of content, they know what to expect. And then you can deliver on those expectations and it makes them trust you and like you just a little bit more. So that's mm. the, that's kind of the secret sauce to, to formatted episodic content. Don't you emotionally broke. Settled in our knowledge and conversations. Don't make